Hello everyone, and we are back with another problem. This question says, let f and g be functions such as f of 0 is 3, f of 2 is 2, g of 0 is 1, g of 2 is negative 1, and the integral of g of x times, g, uh, times f prime of x dx is equal to 4, bounded from 0 to 2. Now the question asks, find the integral of f of x times g prime of x. Uh, from 0 to 2. Now, it's easy to look at this question and get a little bit intimidated because unlike in a typical integral or a typical problem you get, no exact numbers or values are actually given here. You're only given, you're, you're only given values of the function at points, but you're not given information about the function itself. So what would you do for this one? Well, it turns out a question like this can still be done, even though they're a little scary to look at, they can still be done using the information you're given if you just ignore the fact that you don't have the functions as well and try to treat it like a typical integral. Well, what I just said probably sounds a little bit confusing, but look at the function like this. All we're really given is that it's a function times another function. So from that, we can infer that the obvious answer we might have to go with, or the obvious method we would go with, if this was a typical integral, is to use integration by parts. So let's try that. Now I'm going to set u equal to f of x. And the reason why I'm choosing that is because given the facts we're given above, we do have f prime of x mentioned here. So when we take du, that gives us f prime of x dx. And although we still don't actually know the identity of this, we don't know the value of this or the function itself, we can relate this back to information we're already given above. So that's something important to keep in mind. And it's, it may not be immediately apparent how that will help us in the long run, but with a question like this where you're going to have to do a bit of experimenting anyway to get the answer, that's kind of what you want to be looking for, ways in which you can connect what you'll get in the future back to information you already have. So for dv, of course, I'm going to set that equal to g prime of x to dx. And when we take, when we get v, of course, this is going to be the antiderivative of g prime of x, so it's just g of x. Now, to go along, to continue along with the integration by parts method, let's actually write out the, the formula for this. So, of course, uh, the integral for, uh, as you should know, the integral of uh, u times dv with an integration of the parts method is going to be equal to u v minus the integral of v with respect to du. So let's try that here. So the integral of f of x, g prime of x, dx, would be equal to u times v, so u, which is f of x, times v, which is g of x, so f of x times g of x minus the integral of, and then it's v with respect to du. So v, which is g of x, times du, which is f prime of x. So f prime of x dx, of course. I won't try to mention that. That would have been good. Now, if you're observant, then you should notice right away that, hey, this part right here is exactly what we're given up above we know that the integral of it with those bounds is going to be equal to 4. So we can use that to our advantage. So if we were to re-add the bounds here, then we'll be able to substitute this whole thing for 4. Now that does leave us with a bit of a problem here. Uh, now we'll just, since it's just normally integrated, where we have these functions here and we, didn't, and we don't already have a function or an answer given us for this one, we'll simply add the bounds here that go from 0 to 2 and uh, sub the values in there. We won't have to worry about the bounds here because, again, we're already given a value. We're already given an answer for this integral, so it doesn't really matter a whole lot. But our actual integral, though, for this, we're going to want to deal with the bounds here. So it's going to be f of 2 times g of 2 minus f of 0 times g of 0, as the way the bounds are, and then minus 4. So let's just plug those values in that were given up above. So that'll be f of 2, which is 2, 
times g of 2, which is negative 1, minus uh, then the contents of this. So f of 0, which is 3, times g of 0, which is 1. So then 2 times negative 1 is going to be negative 2, minus 3 times 1 is 3, minus 4, and this whole thing is just going to be equal to negative 9. So that will be the value of the integral.